In the previous lecture, I gave the definition of sinusoids and now we are going to have the detailed discussion on the same topic and we know the sinusoid is a signal having the form of sine or cosine function and to understand the sinusoids in more detail, I will take the sine function and uh, let us say that the sine function is representing an alternating voltage and the alternating voltage is Vt. T inside the bracket is telling us that T is the independent variable of this function and let's say Vt is equal to Vm sine omega T where Vm is the maximum value of the voltage or you can call it amplitude sine is telling us the nature of the waveform omega is the angular frequency t is the time which is the x-axis in our plot. The value of vt corresponding to this particular point is vm because the point is the maximum extent of the signal when measured from the x-axis and when you focus on this point then the corresponding value of vt is negative of vm. So this value of vt is voltage Vm and this value of Vt is negative of voltage Vm. Now what about the peak to peak amplitude or peak to peak voltage? It is equal to the voltage between the positive peak and the negative peak. So we have Vm plus Vm which is twice of Vm. Now when you focus on the signal waveform you will find there is a particular structure repeated infinite number of times from minus infinity to plus infinity and therefore we can say that the signal is a periodic signal and the minimum time after which the signal is repeating we call it the fundamental time period and we represent it by uppercase t therefore if this is the origin this will be the fundamental time period t and this will be the half of fundamental time period. Now what will happen if I shift the entire signal waveform towards the left by the integer multiple of fundamental time period? We will have a new signal which is v t plus n t and this signal will be same as our initial signal v t. Why? Because we have the same structure repeating infinite number of times from minus infinity to plus infinity and therefore by shifting the signal towards the left by nt will not change the signal waveform. To have more understanding of this particular concept you may follow the periodic signals lectures in signals and systems subject and you should understand that nt is a period and we are calling it a period because the signal will repeat itself after the duration equal to nt. Now let us do the shifting of the signal waveform towards the right by nt and this means we will have a new signal which is vt minus nt and this time also the new signal will be equal to the old signal and this condition here we call as the condition for a signal to be periodic. So it is condition of periodicity. Any signal in order to be periodic should follow this condition. Now we will move on to the next point. We know the angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi f where f is the frequency in hertz and omega is the angular frequency in radians per second and from here we can say that frequency f will be equal to omega over 2 pi and we also know that frequency is equal to 1 over the time period and from here we can write omega over 2 pi is equal to 1 over time period this implies the time period is equal to 2 pi divided by omega or 
we can say that omega is equal to 2 pi divided by the time period. Now what if I change the x-axis from t to omega t? In many waveforms you will find the x-axis as omega t. So it is important to understand what will happen to the values we are having on the x-axis. When t is equal to 0, when t is equal to 0, this implies omega t is also equal to 0 and therefore 0 will remain as it is. Now when t is equal to t over 2, the corresponding value of omega t will be 2 pi over t because omega is equal to 2 pi over t multiplied to t by 2 and from here we will have omega t equal to pi. So in place of t by 2 we will have pi. Now when t is equal to capital T we will have corresponding value of omega t equal to 2 pi divided by t multiplied to t. So from here we will have 2 pi. So in place of t we will have 2 pi and similarly all the other values will change. Now we will move on to the next point. In the next point we will talk about the more general expression of a sinusoid. Vt equal to Vm sin inside the bracket omega t plus minus phi is a more general expression of a sinusoid. In place of sin you can have cos as well. And in this case omega t is the argument and here we have omega t plus minus phi as the argument and phi is known as the phase shift and it may be leading or it may be lagging. To understand it in a more simple manner let us take signal v1t which is equal to let's say vm sine omega t. Let us also take one signal having the phase shift of phi which is leading. So we will have vm sine omega t plus phi. The third signal is v3t and this signal will lag v1t by phi so we have vm sine omega t minus phi and uh, we know how the shifting will take place if we draw the waveform of v1t we will have something like this so this is the waveform of v1t and from here we can see that v2t will lead v1t by phi because here we have plus phi. So the waveform will look like this. This is the waveform of v2t and v3t will lag v1t by phi because here we have minus phi. So the waveform will look like this v3t. So we can see that when omega t is equal to 0 v1t is also 0 when omega t is equal to negative of phi v2t is 0 when omega t is equal to positive of phi v3t is equal to 0 and here when you compare v2t and v3t you will find the phase difference is equal to 2 times phi and v2t is leading v3t by 2 phi and v3t is lagging v2t by 2 phi. And you must understand the conditions required to compare two sinusoidals. The first condition is they should have the same frequency. The second condition is they should have the same form of expression that is they must be sine or they must be cos. And the third condition is they should have the same sign in their amplitudes either they should be positive or they should be negative. If one is positive and other is negative then there will be shift of 180 degrees. So remember these conditions we will solve some examples based on the discussions we have in this particular lecture and we will do this in the next lecture.